7.5 scalar and vector projections. So in this lesson, I'm still sticking with only the two dimensional vectors here. We're not doing R3. When I do R3, I'll put a link to it on this page um, to let you know where you can find the 3D ones. There's not a big stretch between 2 and 3D, but um, I've always taught it this way and I like how it keeps everything nice and very straightforward. So you have to go back to recall what the dot product was because this is an application of the dot product. So here's our two formulas that we used and proved in the last lesson. And vectors are used in computer animation to determine the length of a shadow projected onto a flat surface. Now, I know this for a fact because I have a daughter in the special effects business out in Vancouver and she said, Mom, we use vectors and vector projections all the time. So happy to know that there is an actual application for this, I am sure. So the first thing we are going to look at is um, I want you to think of it as a shadow. And I've got my nice yellow pen here. So you're going to be thinking about sun rays coming down. So this would be if I was talking about the projection of V onto U. And I think you would see right away that if I projected V onto U, then I would have a shadow that would fall. It's going to come down perpendicular from the tip of this arrow. I'll put a little tip on it there. And the actual shadow or vector, not vector projection, but scalar projection is right here. So we're measuring a shadow. And there is no arrow on the end of this. The reason there's no arrow is because it's a scalar. It's a value. It's just a length. Okay, it doesn't have direction. When we do the vector projections, then we're going to put little arrows on the bottom. So you can also see that if I do um, a vector that is perpendicular to another vector, and I so shine the sun from above like this, that you would see, or even if I went this way, you would see that there's not going to be any shadow. So there's no shadow. And again, this was one of the properties that we talked about of the dot product was that if the dot product was zero then the two vectors were perpendicular so no vector projection when we have the sun straight over our heads you probably know that and finally if we have an obtuse angle as we do here the vector projection the sun's going to shine this way we're going to have to in this case extend vector u so it really doesn't matter how long u is, we're going to make it as long as we want it to be because we need to know where this shadow is going to land here. So my vector projection again is right here. Okay, so that's your vector projection. And this would be what we'd say is V on U. Now, check with your teacher on how they want to write this up. This isn't uh, in the textbook with these little arrows. <clears throat> but it's in another book. We always used it in, in my course, so just make sure you're using the right terminology for your teacher. Okay, now how to find a scalar projection. So if I have vector A and vector B, and we'll call this 0 or O, um, we want to look at how this is projected and again, we're going to draw a nice perpendicular line. So you're going to draw a perpendicular line from the head of the vector that's being projected. Okay, so this is going to be A on B. So vector A is being projected onto B. And of course, my scalar projection is going to be right there. So if we define this point right here, that's right above my vector, we call this point N, okay, right where it's meeting, like this. You can see that ON, the length of ON would be the cos. Let's put a theta in here as well. We need an angle. So this would be the cos of theta would be ON over A. Okay, so let's write that first. So for ON, we'll just put a little colon here so you know what we're talking about. The cos of theta is going to be O n over A, so adjacent over hypotenuse. 
So that means that ON, if I isolate ON here, I would say that means ON is equal to vector A times cos theta. Okay, so far so good. But we know from our equation for the dot product that the dot product of A and B is equal to magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cos theta. And you could see here that I have I have a cos theta here, right? A cos theta. So if I divide both sides by the magnitude of B, like this, you'll see that I end up getting a cos theta is equal to the dot product over the magnitude of B. Let's get the right pen in my hand here. So therefore, um, a cos theta is equal to AB over magnitude of B. And of course, my A cos theta is ON. So I get ON is equal to A dot B over the magnitude of B. And ON is my scalar projection so taking that just one step further, that means that projection of A on B is going to be A dot B over the magnitude of B. Or I have two options here, right? Because I said that ON, which is A cos theta, or it could be this one. So I could write two different equations for the projection of A on B, depending on what I have to work with. Okay, so that's my two equations here for the projection of A on B. I'll put them in a big green box here so you can find them and use them. Okay, so let's look at some different examples. We have here we have u, which is four units long, and v, which has a magnitude of one, and a 20 degree angle between it. And what I want to do is I want to do what is u on v. So u projected onto v. Now you must know that u projected onto v is not the same as v projected onto u. Because if I did v projected onto v, I would just draw a perpendicular here, and this would be my scalar projection, but I'm doing u onto v. So you can see that my vector v is considerably too short for me to make a good sketch of this. So all I have to do is extend this. Don't worry about the length of that one. And I'm going to draw a perpendicular line from the tip down to vector v, the extended vector v. And so now what I have is my u on v is this whole thing here. Don't forget, don't put an arrow on it. Okay, so this is u on v. I need little vectors over them. Okay, so if this is 20 degrees, this is 1, this is 4, I can use the easy formula for this one. uv, I should have put it a little lower, but you can forgive me. So I want the magnitude of u times the cos of theta. So I'm going to do 4 times the cos of 20 degrees. And that comes out to about 3.76. Okay, so let's look at a second one here. I want to show you the different ways um, these could be sketched. So for this one, I want to do um, p, vector p. On vector Q. So P onto Q, again I have to extend Q here, dot that out, drop perpendicular, I'm just going to freehand it this time like this, and so this is my projection right here. I probably should have done those in a different color than my perpendicular. Let's make it blue. 
Okay, so that's P projected onto Q. So that's going to be the magnitude of P times the cos of theta. And P is 2. Cos theta is the cos of 120 degrees. You should know that one off by heart. It's minus a half. So my projection is negative 1. Okay, so it's going in the opposite direction. I know it doesn't have, the, the scalar doesn't have a direction, but it is, it's not on this vector Q. It's on the other side of it. Okay, so let's look at an algebraic calculation this time. So this time I have um, drawn for you uh, vector 2, 4 and vector 6, 1, which we'll call vectors A and B. And I want to evaluate the projection of A onto B. So make sure you're starting at the tip of A and going down to B. So I'm sometimes not so great at drawing perpendicular lines, but I think it's something should be somewhere like here. Okay, so my projection is going to be right here. My scalar projection, no arrow. Keep saying that to yourself. Okay, so I want to know what is the dot product of A and B. So if this is A, this is B, I'm doing 2 times 6 plus 4 times 1. That's my dot product. 2 times 6 plus 4 times 1. And that's going to be 12 and 4 is 16. Oops, I forgot to put it over the magnitude of B. We forgot the magnitude. Oh, it's not too late. The magnitude of B. B is 6 squared plus 1 squared. Square root. 6 squared plus 1 squared. Okay, let's just erase this little piece here so you don't get confused. So it gives me 12 plus 4 is 16 in the numerator. And under the radical sign, I have 36 plus 1 is square root 37. And if you evaluate that, you would get approximately 2.6. So when you get to the end here, make sure when you're looking at your, um, your projection. I mean, I know this isn't perfectly to scale. I was just using a ruler, but if you have it on grid paper, uh, that might be even a little bit better. But make sure that you, you check to see, yeah, that looks like it's about 2. Here's 3, 2.6. Yeah, close. My drawing's not bad. Okay, so that's showing you how to use the um, geometric and algebraic calculations for a projection. So let's talk about the vector projection now. So what's the difference? Not a lot. If you've got the first part, you'll have no trouble with this one. So it says a vector projection. To go from a scalar projection to a vector projection, all you have to do is add an arrow. Almost. We will simply multiply by the unit vector in the direction of B where the shadow is, assuming I'm doing A uh, projected on B. Okay, so the, in the direction of B in this one. If this was a C, it would be on C. If it was a P on Q, it would be on Q. Okay, so it's this one. So vector projections have direction, and therefore you add in the arrow tip like this. Okay, so let's take a look at um, this one here. We're going to do A on B. So if I was to do the vector projection here, same thing. I dot down a perpendicular from A onto B, and I draw the line from the um, vertex towards B and I put an arrow on it and all of a sudden now it becomes a vector projection. So you can see in this formula here, um, here's my scalar projection, right? Without that, there's my scalar projection and I do this and all of a sudden I have a vector projection. So I'm converting the scalar to a vector. Now in the denominator here we have um, magnitude of vector B times magnitude of vector B which you know is the magnitude of vector b squared, or you could also say that's vector b dot vector b. It gives you exactly the same thing. You can check that out for, if you don't believe me, but I wouldn't tell you something that isn't true, especially intentionally. Okay, so let's take a look here. Here's an example. If vector u is minus four one, so I've drawn this one already here. You would draw these before you start. <clears throat> 
not only is it a good idea um, for you to see what's happening, but also you can estimate to see if your answer makes sense by looking at your, your projection. So done a little spelling mistake here, but you forgive me for that, right? And I also put a square bracket here because I normally use square brackets in my class and then I notice the textbook doesn't. So I started making them around and every so often I make a square one with ink and then it's too late. Okay, so let's find the scalar and vector projections for u projected onto v. So vector u projected onto vector v. We're going to do the dot product. So the dot product of these two points here. So you know how to do the dot product. You multiply them and you add them together. So I have minus 4 times 4 plus 1 times 3. And in the denominator, I have the magnitude of the vector that I've projected it onto. So this is the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared. Okay, now before I go any further, I should have started by drawing it. So I'm doing u onto v. So you see u has to come down. So in order for me to draw this down, I'm going to have to extend this again. So you can guess I'm going to get a negative solution here. And I'm going to draw a nice perpendicular line here, about like that. Let's get out the green one. So here's my perpendicular. And where that ends is where my vector projection is going to end. So there's, this is going to be u, vector u projected onto vector v, that arrow. Okay, so let's um, let's do a little calculation, finish this off here. So this gives me 16 minus 3, that's going to be 13 over 4 squared plus 3 squared. That's 16 and 9 is 25. The square root of that is just 5. Um, minus 16 plus 3, that would have been negative 13 over 5. Okay, so this is the scalar projection, right? The scalar projection. Now let's do the vector part of it. So vector projection. Now all we have to do now, remember, is we're going to multiply. We're going to multiply this by, let's write out the formula first. So vector u projected on vector v is going to be the dot product. We've already calculated this part. Times vector b over the magnitude of b. Okay, so this here we've already evaluated, so I'm just going to plug in the answer from above, and then I'm going to multiply it by the vector, and the vector is 4, 3, so that's going to give us x and y coordinates, right, over 5. So that means I'm going to get this vector, 13, times 4, that's minus 52 over 25, and minus 39 over 25. So this is my vector projection. And if you look at it, 52 over 25, that's just 2 and a little bit. So yeah, not bad. And if I go down here, stretch this down, I'm going to be at 1 and about 1 and a half, sort of, right? So here, here would be one, this would be two. So I'm, I'm in the right ballpark. And um, the other thing you could do if you finished your test and you have lots of time, you could prove that this squared, if I took the magnitude of this vector, magnitude of this vector is going to give me this, right? If I square, square these, add them together, square root it, you'll get back to the same length here, only it'll be the absolute value. Okay, so that's your vector projection lesson. Let me just see if I have um, homework questions that I would have assigned. I'll, I'll put them here in case um, you're doing this on your own and you want something that gives you a good idea. So I did 1, 3, 7, 12, and 13 is what I assigned to my class for homework. So that's, um, that would be the end of my first unit if I was teaching it. So the next lesson I'm going to do will be a practice test for 
chapter 6 slash 7, only dealing with vectors in R2. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Um, let's keep the channel busy going and visible for others as well. Tell a friend. Talk to you soon. Bye.